So multicultural in some ways we're familiar with in the Canadian context. And we might say that it's uh, a way in which we interact with people's food and, and uh, style of dress and music. So in some ways it explores superficial expressions of culture, so some of the outward expressions. And in a multicultural society we might say that people are living alongside one another. In a cross-cultural community, we begin to build bridges of understanding of relationship across different cultural communities. So there's some, we might say there's some reaching across boundaries, so it begins to go a little bit deeper. An intercultural church community, which is what the United Church is striving to become, uh, goes much deeper. So initially we had named that intercultural is defined as mutually reciprocal relationships among and between cultures. And I know that's a bit of a mouthful, but some of the key words in there are mutuality, so there's some give and take, there's some exchange, uh, reciprocity, which is similar, and uh, relationship, which um, we know to be dynamic and fluid and changing. So within an intercultural community, some key words might be justice, mutuality, respect, equality, equity, understanding, freedom, respect, diversity, peacemaking. All of these are aspects of what it means to be, become an intercultural community. It's important to note that intercultural is not a substitute for ethnic. I know a lot of, sometimes people think that they're one and the same. It's not, it's actually much broader. If we think about what culture means, culture is our way of being. And in our way of being, we are, we are so much more than our racial or ethnic groups. It has to do with our gender identities, sexual identities, our ages, all kinds of things are incorporated into what we mean by culture. And so then as we define what intercultural means, it also embraces all of this and much more. Also, as we name what it means to be an intercultural church, it's important to note that nobody is left unchanged in the intercultural process. So it's not about one person changing and becoming like somebody else. It's not about assimilation. It's about all of us examining our own cultures, our own biases, our own prejudices, and then beginning to change and create a new kind of community together. So it really is a comprehensive way of being, a comprehensive relationship, a shift in power dynamics, and a whole new way of what it means to be church together. So I think if a congregation is interested in becoming more intercultural, I think there's a few key things to keep in mind. One, the embracing of becoming an intercultural church is not about survival. It's about so much more. It's about embracing a different way of being church together. I think that the second thing, I know that people are often scared. They don't want to enter in. They're afraid of making a mistake. I always tell people, go ahead and make the mistake. <laughs> it's okay. You'll learn from it. And next time, you'll do something different. There's a wise author that I often quote. His name is Eric Law. He has a lot of books around multicultural and intercultural ministries. And he describes what is the grace margin. And he says, you know, when communities come together, uh, when they're, especially when they're similar, we often tend to migrate into what we would call a safe zone. And he encourages us to expand our safe zone by interacting and engaging with um, people who might be beyond our comfort level and stretching ourselves a bit more beyond the familiar not stretching ourselves so far that we become frightened <laughs> and we are scared of what we are doing, but stretching ourselves a little bit. And when we stretch ourselves a little bit, that, that is the grace margin. And you know, in our church life, we know what it means to live in grace. So go ahead and make mistakes. We'll learn from it and there is grace and forgiveness. I think another, another thing to keep in mind is that um, even communities that appear to be homogenous are often quite diverse. So sometimes we can begin with a self-examination of who are we? What is our identity? Who are we as church? And then to move and stretch ourselves a little bit beyond that. So congregations are going about this in different ways. Some churches are looking in terms of racial, ethnic, and cultural diversity. Some are looking in terms of language diversity. Some are looking at in terms of sexual identity. So there's a whole range of things that can be embraced. Some are looking at uh, ages, the differences between generations. All of these are ways of becoming an intercultural church by shifting our, our own cultural identities and expanding something that is broader than ourselves. And the last thing I'll mention is that uh, it's, it's, in some ways, becoming an intercultural church is not new. It brings us back to the very beginning. Our Bible was written in a, a 
very culturally diverse context. They were tensions between racial and ethnic groups. And into that, um, the gospel was spoken. And people heard the gospel in different languages, in different ways, in different contexts. And so we too now uh, are also living that reality, not a new one, but one that goes back to the very beginning. And so as we respond to the call to become an intercultural church, in some ways we are simply living into what it means to be a faithful community. I know that it can be hard work, but I also know that by embracing this, uh, we are creating a welcoming, much broader community for all of God's peoples. So where is intercultural working? Uh, there's a few places. I can give some examples of, of places that have begun the journey, because it's always a journey and a process. It's okay if congregations haven't yet arrived, but it's important to start the journey. So there's one congregation, it's a Japanese congregation, and they, have, they had called a Filipino minister. And within their congregation, they have a mix of people who are Japanese speaking, who um, speak Urdu, who speak English, and, um, and who speak Tagalog. And when they gather for worship, they worship in a multiplicity of languages. And there's a variety of racial, ethnic, and cultural communities. And when they come together, they try to figure out how, how is it that we can be church together. And that's one church that has really begun the journey. Their journey focuses on race and culture, but there are many other ways to become an intercultural church. I think I would mention though, often people would say, hmm, well my congregation is full of people who are all white. Do we really need to worry about it? And I would say, yes. <laughs> I once heard a wise speaker from Australia say uh, that in her context, people often say, um, this congregation is full of people who are all white, so we don't need to worry about becoming an intercultural church. She said, uh, in some ways, we're asking the wrong question. The question is not, we're all white, we don't need to becoming, worry about becoming an intercultural church. The question is, why is the congregation all white? And what do we need to do in order to begin to shift and, shift and change this dynamic? And what kind of diversity is there already within this congregation, which might appear to be homogenous racially, but within there's likely a great deal of diversity. So how do we create an intercultural community in this context? But her challenge to all of us has always been saying that we are all white is not an excuse to not begin the journey. So there's one congregation that took some time to do some self-analysis. They thought through, well, who are we as church? What kinds of things do we value? Um, and what does this mean for us? And they realized that there was actually a huge disconnect between that church and the community around them. Up until that time, they had been trying to do some connection with the neighborhood, sending newsletters out and doing all kinds of things like that. But once they did the, the self-reflection, they realized that the strategies that they were using to try to connect with their congregation were perhaps, I mean, with their community, were not the right strategies. <laughs> so the self-analysis helped them reflect on who they were, but then they were also able to uh, shift that a bit and think through, well, who do we want to be? And then how do we connect that with the community around us? And that began their journey. Another congregation has a, a very dynamic community market that takes place in downtown. It began because people were coming and showing up at this plot of land and saying, we want to do something. And eventually it grew into this vibrant, very racially diverse market of people who come once a week and sell things from their home communities. Some of those people join the church and are connected with the church community. Um, some are just excited to know that the market is here and that it's part of the church as a whole. And that was part of their journey to becoming an intercultural church. Another church looked at uh, language diversity and they began to incorporate different languages into their Sunday morning worship by printing it into their bulletin, by having people speak different languages, hearing the Bible read in different languages. And for people who, for, who, for whom those were their first languages were really excited to hear the gospel read in their own mother tongue. 
and yet for another community, they began the journey and looked at who they were and said, we really want to embrace and become uh, a much more affirming congregation in terms of sexual identity. And so they began to expand that and began to look at what that meant for them. And that was part of their journey to becoming an intercultural church. So I think it's important to note that there's not a one-size-fits-all model. Across the country, people in different congregations will take this on in different ways. People will do a self-analysis, some reflection, and think through, uh, think through strategy, <laughs> think through ideas, and will begin to implement it differently. But the, but the key idea is to begin a process, to begin a process of self-examination, to think about who we are, who we want to be, how we can uh, create this journey in terms of what we want to become and to know that uh, everyone will do it differently.